Welcome to the second video of the LakeFS tutorial series. We're going to assume that you've completed part one and already have a local instance of LakeFS running on your machine. In this video, we're going to make use of that instance and do a few things. Uh, create a repository, add some data to different branches within it, and then try a merge operation to combine them. This should give you a good feel for how some of the more common operations in LakeFS work. Let's begin. So here we are in the LakeFS UI on the repositories tab. We see that there are no repositories listed, so uh, let's create one by clicking on the enticing green create repository button. Uh, a window pops up where there's a few things to fill out. The first is the repository ID or name, which can take any value. I'll call mine my repo. Um, next is the storage namespace, which tells LakeFS where the underlying data will live. Since this is a local installation, we're going to keep the local prefix. And from there, we can name the bucket anything. Again, I'll go with my bucket and we can keep the default branch to main. That's common. Um, one note on the storage namespace, if this was a cloud installation on uh, you know, AWS or Google or Azure or any other storage service like MinIO is also popular, we would add the value to point to that cloud uh, resource. So let's click uh, Create Repository. And now we see we have a repository called My Repo Created. There is nothing in it currently. Um, so what we can do to change that is upload our first object. To upload an object, again, there's a, an enticing green button in the UI to do that um, right here. And we click Upload Object. We choose the file we want to upload. In this case, I created two kind of dummy files to upload for this tutorial. Uh, we can change the name, but I'll leave it as object1.text and hit upload. Now under objects, we see object1.txt. And similar to regular Git, when you add a file, it's not automatically specified as being tracked for changes and versioning. Uh, so, it, you know, it's an uncommitted change. Uh, so we want to do it, what we want to do is commit the change and we can add a message for the commit and optionally also metadata custom metadata fields um, i'll make it the committer and say it was me in case that's useful in the future to find it so we commit the changes now we see on the commits tab um, a first commit for this repository being created and a second commit for this file being added. Maybe a better commit message would have been, you know, object1.txt added. Now let's head over to the branches tab and try creating a branch. We already have main. Let's create a new branch called Paul's branch. It'll be sourced from the main branch. It's the only, only option we have. And we can click onto the Paul's branch. We see object1.txt exists on this branch. Let's add a new file to this branch. Let's try object2.txt, a file that does not exist. Hit upload, and now we see both object1 and object2 on this branch. However, object2.txt is an uncommitted change. So let's. Uh, add it uh, a commit to add it add object to again I'll put committer Paul commit changes and now on the Paul's branch we see add object to as a commit if we switch back to the main branch that commit message does not exist but let's say we wanted to add that file back to the main branch. What we could do is compare Paul's branch to 
the main branch. And we see that object2.txt is identified as the difference between the two branches. Uh, and if we want to synchronize them, what we can do is hit merge. Yes, and now on the main branch, we see both object1 and object2 existing on the main branch. If we go to the commits tab, we see a new commit uh, merging Paul S branch into main. This is very similar to Git functionality and workflows that you are likely already familiar with. To recap, in this tutorial, we covered creating a repository, adding data to different branches, and then merging the differences into a single branch. These are basic examples of the type of operations you can perform with LakeFS when incorporating them into your data pipelines. You get some pretty cool guarantees like isolation during data ingestion. This will be the topic of future videos, so stay tuned, and I'll see you soon.